We are go for it. Start. Five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Atlantis on a mission to study planet Earth. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling. Atlantis is underway on its 13th trip to space. Rolling on course for a 57 degree formation orbit from Island North and South in Pond orbit. The space shuttle is one of the most complex and sophisticated vehicles ever made. With a combined engine thrust of over 37 million horsepower and millions of moving parts, the shuttle is truly a marvel of engineering. The shuttle has performed such amazing feats such as conducting scientific experiments in microgravity, launching space probes to the outer planets, and even building a space station. However, despite its technical achievements, the shuttle was proving to be a far more dangerous vehicle than previous spacecraft. In 1986 and 2003 respectively, NASA lost two shuttles, Challenger and Columbia, and both crews totaling 14 astronauts. While the public watched these tragedies unfold live, almost no one knows about the near disaster in the space shuttle Atlantis just nearly two years after the loss of Challenger. On December 2nd, 1988, the space shuttle Atlantis lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida for a four-day mission to place a military spy satellite in space. However, during launch, insulation foam from the shuttle's fuel tank broke off and hit the shuttle's underside thermal protection system tiles. These system the tiles protect the shuttle from the intense heat of re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. This caused massive damage to the shuttle. The shuttle only survived due to the damage not being on an important area of the shuttle's underbelly and that a communications antenna blocked the hot gases from destroying the shuttle's interior. The failure of the thermal protection system ultimately doomed the shuttle Columbia in 2003. This is the story of the near disaster on the space shuttle Atlantis. Following the end of the Apollo moon landings in 1972, NASA needed a low-cost and reusable vehicle. It would include the use of reusable aircraft and some rocket boosters. Several concepts were proposed and one design was chosen. It included the use of a main fuel tank, two rocket boosters, and an airplane-like vehicle called an orbiter. President Richard Nixon approved the shuttle program in the mid-1970s, and the first shuttle, Columbia, flew on April 12, 1981. Immediately, issues began to arise with the shuttle's thermal protection system. During the launch, several of the white ceramic tiles on the top of the shuttle fell off. Columbia returned to Earth without incident, but several of the panels had fallen off. NASA engineers had to devise alternatives for keeping the tiles to the body of the space shuttle. The tiles weren't the only thing that plagued the space shuttle. The shuttle was promised to be a more reliable vehicle than previous Apollo missions, however, this proved to be anything but, as the shuttle was far more complex than anyone had imagined. Whole systems need to be refurbished and redesigned. The launch schedules had to be greatly redesigned, and the shuttle was proven to be more and more expensive to run than previously thought. This led to constant delays and interruptions, and the shuttle never lived up to its reliable vehicle that was promised. As the cost grew, NASA needed to launch more missions in a shorter time frame to meet the cost demands. Also, to get the public interested, NASA sponsored the Teacher in Space program, which would allow a civilian school teacher to travel in space. Massachusetts native Kristen McCullough was chosen out of hundreds of entries. It was believed that her presence in space would garner new public interest in the space shuttle. On January 28, 1986, the space shuttle Challenger lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center, but exploded 73 seconds later, killing all seven astronauts on board. The explosion was traced to a failed rubber gasket known as an O-ring that allowed hot gases to escape from the rocket booster that then ignited the main fuel tank. The shuttle was grounded for nearly three years while inspections and modifications were made to the other shuttles. This caused a massive disruption in the space shuttle program, and the shuttle didn't fly again until late September of 1988. However, nearly four years after the loss of Challenger, NASA came close to losing another space shuttle. On December 2nd, 1988, 
Space Shuttle Atlantis, mission designation STS-27, took off from the Kennedy Space Center for a four-day mission to deliver a U.S. Air Force reconnaissance satellite. The crew consisted of Captain Robert L. Gibson, pilot Gus S. Gardner, and mission specialists Richard M. Mullane, Jerry L. Ross, and William M. Shepard. At the time of the flight, Atlantis was the youngest shuttle to be added to the fleet, being added in 1985. The mission had been delayed once due to weather, but took off on December 2nd. The mission and the payload were classified by the U.S. Department of Defense. Due to the classified nature of the mission, very little is known about the shuttle mission to this day. During the launch, foam insulation that insulated the main fuel tank shut off and hit the Atlantis' thermal protection system, severely damaging it. The crew attempted to use the shuttle's robotic arm to inspect the damage to the shuttle's underside, but due to the camera's poor resolution and range, identifying any damaged areas seemed to be impossible. The problem was magnified even worse due to the fact of the secret nature of the mission. Pictures of the orbiter could not be taken. The crew had to use another form of transmission to send the images, which was also of poor quality. The bad quality of the images caused NASA engineers to dismiss the damage as reflections of light from ice crystals in orbit with the shuttle. This made the crew annoyed and irritated that NASA wasn't looking fully into the problem. We were going to die, said Commander Gibson, but if the shuttle was disintegrating, I was going to tell Mission Control what I thought of their analysis. Atlantis was able to return safely on December 6, 1988 at Edwards Air Force Base in California. When the crew inspected the shuttle upon landing, mission specialist Richard M. Mullane commented, I had visions of molten aluminum being smeared backwards like rain on a windshield. The damage was much worse than any of us had expected. Inspectors noted 700 tiles had been damaged and one full panel had disappeared altogether. The missing tile was over an antenna that had provided guidance for the shuttle during landing. This likely protected the shuttle's fragile aluminum skeleton from melting, thus saving the vehicle from destruction. The near loss of the space shuttle Atlantis is an often constant reminder of the dangers of space exploration. Very few people know about what happened to the Atlantis, as it is often overshadowed by the tragedies of Challenger and Columbia. Commander Robert L. Gibson noted that had the Atlantis been destroyed, Coming only after one successful launch since Challenger, Congress would have canceled the space shuttle program.